somebody who doesn't know God. As whether you're from Nigeria or whether you're from Ghana, you understand that this nation belongs to your father. You will not behave like a Mugaraque. Because you know that this nation belongs to your father. That's why I say we quote that scripture without understanding, without revelation. When you have full revelation of what it is, when God begins to send me out to the nations, I don't go in as a Mugaraque. When I go to Nigeria, Nigeria, they've given me names. They call me Chinyere, they call me Tolulope, they call me Ivie or Sasere, they've given me all the names. Because I behave as if I own that nation. When I go to Zimbabwe, they give me names. When I go to Eswatini, they, 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 they call me Duduzile. Why? Because every nation I've understood that I'm not a Mugwekwe. So when I enter into that nation, I speak to the, the gates. To the gates that the king utter of Zion. And so the gates must bow down. The gates must recognize the daughter of Zion. Listen, when you get revelation of this, it will completely change the way that you operate. When you understand that as a son of God, you've been called to exercise authority and to manage your father's estate. for sons, sonship, sons who are ready to say we are ready to steward, to manage our father's estate in the legislative area, in the judiciary. We are ready to manage our father's estate in the marketplace. We are ready to manage our father's estate. We are ready according to Isaiah 51:19, to take the nations by the hand. Isaiah 51:19 says, awake, awake, oh ye, there are no sons in Jerusalem to take the nation by the hand. But I see from now on that South Africa, there are sons who are rising up to take the nation by the hand. So that's just the introduction. That's just verse 1. It's telling you your jurisdiction. It's giving you your authority. In law, we talk about jurisdiction. There's geographical jurisdiction. There's jurisdiction that tra transcends geography. So it's just setting your understanding to say this is the jurisdiction you have. This is who you are. This is the capacity that you have. And then that same Psalms ends in 7 to 10. After you know who you are, it now declares to the gate. Because until you know who you are, you can't make a declaration to the gate. When you understand who you are and who Yeshua is, take your identity from him, you begin to command gates. God, God began to unravel this to me at a greater level. When my, my mother passed away on September the 2nd, on level 5 lockdown, when the gates were shut, as an only child, I said, Lord, how can you allow my mother to die during lockdown? Who is going to bury my mother? And God said, shut up, Pearl, shut up. I've given you authority to speak to the gates. Yeah. You speak to the gates, my child. Hallelujah. The phone call came at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. In fact, I woke up at 3 a.m. Boom. And I couldn't sleep. And the phone call came at half past three. And nobody told me my mother died. I just said hello and I started crying. And the person on the other phone just said, mm, mm. They just said, mm. They were agreeing with what I already knew. But then God said, speak to the gates. Because I've already given you authority. Declare to the gates. La brosa na makre brosha katazabaka. Oh my God. You know what? God has just completely changed the message that I was going to preach. And now he just tells me, I need to let you understand your authority. Who you are. Because if you can get this revelation and begin to understand, you will operate differently. You will operate differently. He said, speak to the gates. Speak to the gates. I began to speak to the gates to declare. In the midst of tears at half past three. <laughs> Father, I speak to the gates. I spoke to the gates. And I made declarations on level five. On level five. You know, I, I, I was 
almost bitter, I said to myself, Lord, I've been praying because God had told me that your mother will not cross over into January. He spoke to me. I knew. And my prayer in response was to say, God, don't allow her to die in lockdown. I have to bury my mother. That was my prayer. But you see, sometimes you can pray a prayer that is limited because you have limited understanding of who he is. showed they had no revelation of who Yeshua was. They said, Lord Yeshua, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Yeshua knew the exact moment that he was dying. You know why I say that? Because he said to the disciples, Lazarus is asleep. Appointed time. 
understand. That's what, he, that's what he told me. And he also allowed it so that I would understand that he's God who can get me to Botswana. Whatever law, whatever policy is there, I should not allow the laws of earth to contain me in any way. And so with the passing of my mother, he knew it would have to take the passing of my mother to provoke me into that violence, wanting to go ahead. If it had not been the passing of my mother, I would have just, you know, just Angie, most right? Yeah. But he had to transition me to a next level because listen to me, beloveds, in this next level, sons of God must arise, sons of God must take dominion. This is, there is a battle that is waging for the souls of nations. And it's going to take sons of God who are not ready, who are not willing to compromise, but they're ready to take the nations by hand. It's going to take sons of God who have hard foreheads, but compassionate heart. It's going to take sons of God who are ready to be polished arrows in the hands of the mighty warrior that God will shoot them and release them and they will not miss their targets, their kingdom targets, their kingdom mandate, their kingdom purpose. It's going to take sons of God who will say, I will arise. Sons of God who God has not given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love,
Redeemer and our King of Kings. We pray and the people of God all say. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's sit down in the presence of the Lord. Hear what the Lord is, hear what the Lord is saying. Praise the Lord. What an honor to be here with you as you celebrate one year, one year, and we thank God for the foundations. The Bible says in Psalms 11:3. What can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? For, so foundations are very important. And we're grateful to God that in this one year he's been laying foundations. Because anything that is laid on improper or weak foundations will crumble. Yes. Will crumble. This week my whole ceiling just fell in. Because and my builder told me that the nails that were sustaining the ceiling were not strong enough. When something is not strong enough, it will crumble. So we thank God for the foundation, which is the Word of God. The Word of God has been the foundation for TLC. And we thank God for the foundation that he's been laying in this season. Praise the Lord. And may God take you from strength to strength. Hallelujah. From one level of glory to another level of glory. But it will always have to be through his Word. The minute you leave his word, the minute you depart from his word, is the minute your foundations will start to be shaky and will crumble. So I'm thankful that you are word-based. May you continue to be word-based and not follow worldly trends, but follow kingdom trends and biblical trends. Hallelujah. I bless God for all your lives and I'm thankful to be here on this opening night and I just, I love you all, this is family. I, I see a lot of friends and family. I'm thankful for Pastor Nixon, Savannah, who's here. Also from Elevate TV with his beautiful wife, Mom Fundisi. We thank God for you, amen. And I see lots of friends, some of my daughters in the faith and sons in the faith, one right here who I ordained, um, Pastor, um, Pastor Mguni, praise the Lord. And uh, she's here with her children. And we thank God for her, and I, I see a whole lot of people out there. I see some of my Bible students at the back, right there. The Nenes, praise the Lord. I see you all there, Pastor Ingrid and her, her husband, uh, brother, Brother Spoo, praise the Lord. And I've seen, I've seen some people, I don't know if that is, is that Kuzai? See, he's, 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 nothing shall separate him from him and his mask, so I can't see. <laughs> I can't see him. No, no, you did well, son. It's some of us who are, you know, maybe we're breaking the rules. Praise the Lord. But the, I want to thank God for each and every one of you as we just begin to share this word. It's a word I believe that the Lord has deposited in my heart. And it's a word about salt, salt. And I don't want you to switch off because some of you immediately may just say, ah, salt, we've heard about this message. Listen, God is dropping this message. I don't know how, but I need you to open the ears of your spirit. I need you to ask God to open the ears of your womb. Did you know that your womb has ears? Your womb has ears. Everything has gates. When the Bible talks about gates, don't just think of the ordinary gates. Your body has gates. Health gates. Your, your eyes are gates. Whatever you look at, visualize, you see. It enters in you and you begin to perform after it. So be careful. Your eyes are gates. That's why God said to Abraham in Genesis 15, 5, Abraham could not comprehend. How am I going to be father of nations when my body is old and decrepit? And God said in Genesis 15, 5, come out of the tent. Come out of the tent. And then he said, look to the stars. Why? He was using his eye gates, visual. So your eyes are gates that whatever you look upon, whatever you visualize, you now begin to take action it. So God said, you can't see it, you can't be near it, so come out of the tent because the tent is stopping you from seeing. There's a tent mentality. When you are in a tent, it will limit you. If you are thinking that you are not successful because you come from a poor family, that is a poverty tent mentality. It will limit your thinking. So God says, there's a tent that's limiting you. You're thinking, oh, because I'm a woman, I can't do this. Oh, because I'm a black woman, I can't do this. Oh, because I'm a black African woman, three strikes and I'm out. Tent mentality. Yeah. Come out of the tent. Tell somebody, come out. Come out. Come out of the tent. Come out of the tent. Come out of the tent. Come out of that tent. 
whatever tent is keeping you there. Hey, I'm from the township. Hey, man, I'm from Mami Lodi. Hey, I'm from Saka. Just watching. 
Your DNA is aligning to what you are watching. It's in agreement. With Umbaku, with Iskandar. It's booming with Iskandar. Your Moya. Booming. It's an agreement. It's an agreement. One day I'll give you a proper teaching around eye gates. Eye gates and how purpose begins to be aligned with eye gates. But I wanted you to understand the importance. Understand that everything has gates. Cities have gates. Nations have gates. And at the gates is where important functions are fulfilled. At the gates is where they conduct business. At the gates is where defense is, is, is conducted. At the gates is where justice is dispensed. Every important thing is conducted at the gates. It's a place of authority. It's a place of possessing. When God says possess the gates, he's not kidding. Your bodies, young ladies, have gates. Understood that you would shut those gates so that when that boy, wherever he is, is telling me, Hey, sweetie, wait till to to let Coca Cola bottle. Try to Coca Cola bottle. You will speak to those gates and say, These Coca Cola bottle gates, I close you. Close them and make sure that they are only opened to your husband. If you understood that your body has gates. Sexual gates, reproductive gates, you will close those gates. You will begin to speak to your gates so that no unauthorized person gains entry into those gates. But you will gate, not eating, valley gate. Valley gate, tell somebody, valley gate. It's really gating or what? Yeah, really gate for what? Valley gate. You see, even the enemy knows that they're gates. He's now trying to get you to Now young girls are going out there doing all sorts of twerky twerky things. But you're gates for what? Pounds! <laughs> <laughs> gates for what? Opening gate for who? For what? For an uncircumcised Philistine? CO2, carbon dioxide, and then go to sleep. 
salt, salt. There are a few things we're going to say, and then we're going to pray, and then we just, that's, that's, that's it for the opening night. Matthew 5, 13. You are the salt of the earth. I wish you could tell just three people. You, point at them, tell them, remind them. You, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt. You are the salt. You, red on its life. You are the salt of the earth. Yes, you are. Point at yourself now. Say, I, I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt. Let it, let it penetrate. Let it marinate. May you understand what it means to be the salt. Begin to walk in your saltiness. You are the salt of the earth. But, but, J, but, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. Underfoot by man. Praise the Lord. First thing I want to say about salt. Salt has been underrated. It has been underrated. People don't understand the power and the impact of salt. And my prayer for you today is that you will understand. Next time you hear that you are the salt, you will have a greater revelation and understanding of what it truly means to be salty. You are the salt of the earth. First thing I want to say about salt. Salt doesn't just add taste. You know, we, we preach and we talk, hey, salt flavors, salt adds taste. Listen, that is undermining the power of salt. It's not just about adding taste, tasting, and why it's eating, no. We are undermining the, the, the capacity, the effect, and the influence of salt. It's not just a, an addition to taste. It doesn't just add to taste. It determines the palpability of the dish. Somebody say palpability. Your, 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 everything about you. The food you eat changes. 
You are the person now who will be eating, you know, drinking hot tea and scones in the middle of the summer heat. Got pinky so, oh, is this tea? So it's very nice tea, isn't it? Yes, it reminds me of Wimbledon, you know. changes your whole lifestyle changes why because you've been colonized now salt is a colonizer I, I need you to make that connection so God is effectively saying I need you to change the way people talk I need you to change the way people dress I need you to change the lifestyle because you are salt and when salt pitches up the atmosphere must change you are not a thermometer because a thermometer just takes temperature you are Salt. How many people here cook? Hey, 
about corruption, it removes it. You've been complaining about corruption, but doing nothing. Can you imagine if the salt was just complaining, Ganama? Be salt. Be salt. We must colonize or be. 
be thrown out. We must colonize or be trampled underfoot. And in closing, I want to say this. Listen, the thing about salt, we don't pour a whole bucket of salt, mon ami. <laughs> Just a little bit of salt is enough. And a little, it's enough to change the whole flavor. <laughs> Listen to what was said in Acts 17, verse 6. Acts 17. This is what people were saying about the disciples. They're complaining about Yeshua and his people, his peeps, his team. This is what they said. I, I, we're talking about a team of 12 people. They said, but when they did not find them, they dragged in, they dragged in and some brethren. They dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. A little salt. This was not a, a big group of people. There were less people than there are here. It was a group of 12 people. And they're saying, hey, this group of 12, they've turned the world upside down. As a matter of fact, they haven't turned it upside down. They turned it right side up. Yeah right side up, but they're speaking about the impact of just a small group of 12. A little salt can make a big difference. My God, TLC, TLC, maybe you're trying to be a mega church. Maybe you're saying, hey, now we're in with about 5,000, but God doesn't need you to be 5,000 before he can start to use you now, as you are now. You are more than the disciples. You are more than 12. Come on, TLC. I don't know where you may be coming from. People are aspiring for mega churches, but God is saying as young as you are, you are Shout like you have.